Hello, and welcome to Bucra Hydraulics. In this video, we will address the most common failure modes associated with various power unit assemblies. We will also determine the most likely root causes for each of these failure modes, and then address how to correct these issues safely and effectively. I'll be referencing a standard Bucra Hydraulics power unit as we navigate through these topics. The first step in any power unit troubleshooting is to understand what product you are working with. This will help to determine how to properly connect the system, how the unit functions hydraulically, and in the case of a failure, how to find the most effective corrective action. Identifying the type of system you are working with is as simple as locating the unit's model code listed on the serial number label. Below is an example of a standard Booker Powerpack serial number label. Here, M- are the most critical in understanding your hydraulic circuit. In the example below, the serial number label tells us that the system is an M-3551-8888. So the numbers we want to focus on are the 3551. The first of the four digits represents the type of motor the system utilizes. A three represents a DC system, while a four represents an AC system. The second digit, in this case a five, represents the size of the aluminum center section used in the power unit. The second digit is typically a two, three, four, or five, where a two identifies the system uses a mini base. A three utilizes a four and a half inch round base, a four using a four and a half inch square base, and a five being a five and a quarter inch square base as seen here. The two final digits are typically the most important for troubleshooting. In this example, we can see that the unit has a five one for the final two digits. This represents a double acting power unit within the Booker Power Pack product family. In this video, we will be discussing a 5-1 double acting circuit, but these general concepts are applicable to most power pack assemblies. For more information on circuit types not covered in this video, please find the link to our catalog in the video description below. Before jumping into the troubleshooting portion of this video, it is most important to review the safety tips to ensure that you are properly protecting yourself. Our hydraulic power packs can build pressures well in excess of 3000 PSI. Because of this, we highly recommend eye and skin protection. All troubleshooting tips covered in this video are intended for use by qualified individuals with a basic knowledge of hydraulic and electrical principles. When wiring your hydraulic power unit, it is critical that you follow all local electrical and safety codes, the national electrical codes in your jurisdiction, and all OSHA requirements. Finally, we highly recommend referring to the user's manual of the piece of equipment you are servicing prior to watching this video. One of the most common complaints reported to us is that a power unit's DC motor is not running. If you are experiencing a motor that does not seem to be running, there are several reasons why you may be experiencing this issue. We will now cover the most common causes. The first and most common cause is electrical wiring. This includes loose power connections, inadequate wire size, poor grounding and or poor power source. The good news is that many of these issues are easy to identify and correct. As discussed earlier in this video, the first potential corrective action for a motor not starting is to check the power, ground, and motor start relay signal wire connections. These connections should all be snug and free of corrosion. As you can see here, the four areas you will want to check on your power unit are the positive battery connection to the start relay solenoid, the ground connection to the base or second stud on the motor, and the signal wire, typically wired to the top post of the motor start relay. If all of these connections look to be secure and free of corrosion, you will next want to check your connections at the power source. In some applications, a fuse or circuit breaker may be installed between the power source and the power unit. 
In this case, please ensure that the circuit breaker or fuse is properly installed and in working order. As previously stated, we recommend using a strong ground connection. When possible, run your ground connection directly to the ground stud of the battery. If grounding directly to the battery is not an option in your application, it is important that you use a solid grounding point on a clean metal surface. Grounding to a surface that is powder coated and or has a surface treatment can result in a poor ground and cause poor system performance. Indications of a poor ground can include an inoperable motor, excess motor heat generation, electrical arcing, valves not properly functioning, and intermittent system operation. Now that you have checked all of your power unit connections, if your motor is still not powering on, you may be experiencing high voltage drop. This can be caused by improper cable sizing to your battery and or controls. For more information regarding proper cable sizing for your power unit, please visit our DC power unit catalog linked in the description below. If you have gotten to this point and your DC motor is still not starting, there's still hope. We will now review the functions of your motor's DC start relay. The first and easiest way to check if your start relay is functioning is to listen for the audible contact switching noise. In this demonstration, we have disconnected the motor's bus bar connection to the positive terminal post. With the removal of this bus bar connection, we can easily hear the sound of a healthy start solenoid switching. The clicking noise indicates the mechanical switching mechanism is freely moving as intended. If you do not hear this noise and you have confirmed that your connections are properly connected, it is likely that you have a failed motor start relay. Please contact your local Booker distributor for a replacement start relay. The final potential cause for a motor not starting is a seized hydraulic pump. A hydraulic pump can seize due to a multitude of reasons, including, but not limited to, fluid contamination, running the system without fluid, utilizing improper fluids for the system's operating conditions, and overheating the power unit. In this video, we have covered common troubleshooting issues found in power unit assemblies. Please visit our YouTube channel for access to a growing catalog of product videos, instructional information, troubleshooting guides, and more. Thank you.